God before me, God behind me, to the left and the right. God above me, God below me, all around and inside. God before me, God behind me. To the left and the right. God above me. God below me. All around and inside. Deep, deep, deep breath in now. Deep breath in and hold it for just a moment. Hold it now for a moment if you can. And then slowly, slowly exhale. Slowly breathe out and settle into this time this morning. Settle into this place. Settle into a time of meditation, a time of clearing the mind and opening the heart. A time of coming together. A time of coming apart for a while, a time of being in the midst, in the midst of, in the midst of the presence, in the midst of sacred space, in the midst of silence, coming together in the midst of listening, in the midst of being, in the midst of realizing that we're both human and divine. So settling into all that, settling into it, breathing into it, breathing into the wonderfulness of all that we are, that each of us are, breathe into the wonderfulness that you are. I invite you to allow that wonderfulness to begin to fill your body, to fill your mind, to fill your heart, to fill you to be the wonder, the wonderful that you truly are. For I am a wonderful child of God, born into this human experience, a divine, a divine experience. My divinity, my divinity comes with me to the human experience. And I settle into that divinity and I invite you as we move into this time of meditation, to claim that divinity as I claim mine, to claim your divinity and to claim your human experience, and to allow the wonder of both of those to relax you, to settle you down, to breathe into it, to breathe in, breathe out, and allow the focus now to turn to the breath, to the breathing in, to the breathing out, to the relaxing breath, to the giving, to the receiving breath, to the breath of breathing in love, breathing out love, and to the body that breathes in and breathes out and begins to relax, to let go of any tension, to let go of any stressful feelings. Breathing in, breathing out, the belly drops, the shoulders drop, the breath continues, the breath in, the breath out. The shoulders drop and the jaws drop. And I become one, mind, body, and soul, one together.
One. Breathing in, breathing out. The mind begins to clear. The mind slows down. I allow the wonderfulness to flow through me now. The wonderfulness. I am wonderful. Life is wonderful. God is wonderful. The universe is wonderful. Inclusivity is wonderful. I am wonderful. I am. I am. Breathing in, breathing out. I settle now into that I am. I am that I am. I am. I am in the midst of relaxing. I am in the midst of swinging wide the doors. In the silence, I am. In the silence, the doors swing wide. In the silence, wonderful. I sit now in the silence, in the silence. Breathing in, breathing out. The breath of God, the breath of wonder. Breathing in and breathing out, I slowly return to this now moment. Wiggling my fingers and wiggling my toes, moving my legs and moving my arms. Licking the lips with the tongue to moisten them. And taking in a deep, deep, deep breath. Holding it for just a moment. And as I exhale, I slowly allow the eyes to open. And I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I'd like to invite you all just to stay in that quiet, contemplative, meditative state and uh, listen to the words of this and pray these words with me from um, St. Francis of Assisi. is dark may I bring light and where there 
is hate. Let me so love in a world filled with doubt. May I show faith be a guide through despair and a beacon of hope. Make me an instrument. Make me an instrument. Make me an instrument of your peace. Of your peace. And guide me to give pardon for And where sadness is found, may I bring joy. May I seek to console, to understand, and to share your great love without demand. Make me an instrument. Make me an instrument. Make me an instrument of your Thank you, David Trolley. David Trolley, beautiful. Make me an instrument of your peace. 
What a great prayer. Mm. So what's coming up? Hi, it's good to be back here with you today. It's, I've been looking forward to today and the next couple of weeks is got a couple of fun things planned and, and enjoyable things coming up at our Sunday morning virtual service. Of course, next week is Father's Day and uh, uh, we're, we're going to be celebrating the divine masculine, the divine masculine in all of us, uh, that we all share the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And we uh, talked about uh, the divine feminine on Mother's Day. So we'll talk about the divine masculine and how we can all use the divine masculine to move through this human experience and how do we incorporate both of them into our human experience for the best life ever and then after that we've got fun sunday with new members sunday we're welcoming in five new members to our ministry what a joy and then chaplain dedication is that sunday and we've got two new chaplains and four returning chaplains and we're going to celebrate that and at the same time, we're uh, going to uh, talk about to lead is to serve. And certainly in, when we dedicate our chaplains, we see a group of leaders that are serving in a special way. And so we'll take a look at that next Sunday or in two weeks. I'm sorry, two weeks. And then I wanted to let you know about a summer series I'm going to do. It's called the John Duffy Summer Series, Back to the Basics. We're going to do the Unity Five Principles again, five weeks of the Unity Principles, and there will be available to you the My Five Principles Journal, and you'll be able to pick up the My Five Principles Journal on the website or in the e-news. And I invite you to print it out or use it online. And I invite you to really print it out and use it to take notes in so that we can really get absorbed in the five principles so that we can know what they are, so that we can say them, just even the quick, quick version of them, just so we really get those five principles ingrained in us. So that's coming up. And then our own Mary Lindsay booked Rabbi Rami Shapiro in August. And I don't know if you know Rabbi Rami, but he's a well-known figure. He, if you read Spirituality and Health magazine, you'll find him in there every month. I've certainly seen him before. And Rabbi Rami Shapiro, commonly called Rabbi Rami, is an author, teacher, and speaker on the subjects of liberal Judaism and contemporary spirituality. Rabbi Rami's great. You're going to enjoy him. He, he uh, founded a group called One River. And they promote the study of perennial wisdom. And if you remember perennial wisdom, we, we talked about that in Unity of World Religions and Paul John Roach talked about that. And Martha Creek talked about it. I think she'll be talking about it again when she's back. So we've got a lot of good things coming up this summer. But I want to ask you, what's your comfort zone? Do you know? Do you know what your comfort zone is? Are you willing to explore the space outside of that comfort zone? Are you? Think about it now. Are you willing to, do you know what your comfort zone is? And are you willing to explore the space outside of it? Or are you content in that comfort zone? Are you stuck there? Staying there because it feels safe there, even though it might not feel good there? Well, let me say that again. Are, are you staying in your comfort zone because it's safe there, even though it might not feel good there. You're staying there because moving out of it might feel even harder, might feel stranger, might feel uncomfortable, might feel different. Funny how we can be in a situation that doesn't feel good and find that to be our content zone, our comfort zone that moving out of it is more uncomfortable than staying in it. And talking about moving in and out of your comfort zone, age doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what age you are. Oh, you're, I'm retired. I'm in my comfort zone. Forget it. Yeah, that's not a good retirement. I'm sorry. If you want to, go ahead. But staying in your comfort zone is not going to make the best human experience ever. 
it's okay to be in it and it's okay to know when to be in it and it's good to move in and out of it but staying in it and staying in it no matter how old you are isn't any good for you well you know I've been here going on four years and you're getting to know more about me than you need to know. I mean, I mean, well, you know a lot about me now and you know that uh, I've been going through my second midlife crisis and now this morning, I'm gonna make another confession. I don't like large grocery stores. I don't. I'll do whatever I can to stay out of a Safeway, a Kroger, a Piggly Wiggly, you name it. No, I'll do whatever I can to stay out of it. Give me my Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. I'll go in there or Whole Paycheck, I should say, because it's really, I mean, well, we all know the food prices are what they are today. And, and Whole Paycheck and even Trader Joe's has gone up there quite a bit. But I, I and they're smaller, uh, less chaos in them. I, I just like to stay out of those uh well, out of the Safeway, particularly because that's what we have here in Walnut Creek. And well, you know, I've given up my car and I'm walking an awful lot. And and I can walk to Trader Joe's, I can walk to Whole Foods, and uh, I, I can shop. And then I call a lift and bring the groceries home. And I've gotten into the habit of it. I've gotten into the habit of it, have I? I've gotten comfortable with that already. It's not even been a year, and I've gotten comfortable with it. And uh, well, the whole paycheck is getting expensive. And, you know, I, well, I shouldn't say this, but I will anyway, because I say things I shouldn't say. I don't trust the produce in Trader Joe's all the time. So, and when you're a plant-based eater, you, you have to trust the produce, right? <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking, what am I going to do about this? And um, even though, you know, if any, if you go to Trader Joe's, it's a comfortable place, even though, they move everything around every week, right? If you go in Trader Joe's, you know that. You can expect to be out of your comfort zone for a little bit until you get acclimated because they, they, don't, they don't have a lot of stuff in there and they want to move it around. They want to merchandise it. But I can usually find everything because I know the labels and everything. For the last 20 years, I've stayed away from them. Why, even once in Kansas City, I attended a three-day silent retreat and needed to pick up groceries on the way home and went into the Walmart in Lee Summit, Missouri and lasted about 4.5 minutes until three kids came around the corner and hit me with, hit, ran into my grocery cart with their shopping cart. And I left it all sitting there and went back out and got in my car and left. I said, I'll never go back to one of those big grocery stores again. Well, Coming out of the gym the other day, I was going to walk to the grocery store. I was going to walk to Trader Joe's, but I found myself heading to Safeway for some strange reason. I'm thinking, what are you doing? You're going to Safeway today? It's it's halfway there, and I was tired after working out. We had done legs, and I, oh, you know, I was, I was ready to go home and not walk to the grocery store. But I said, what are you doing heading to Safeway? Um, well, maybe I should check out Safeway. Maybe I should go in and see what's at Safeway. Maybe I, you know, maybe this is something new. Maybe it's time to step out. Maybe it's time to find out what the produce is like in Safeway. Take a breath, Carlini. Get out of your comfort zone. Slow down. Have a little confidence. Let's go. You know, we can move out of the comfort zone as life calls upon us to. We can stay when we need to, and we can step out when we need to. And it's okay. It's just not okay to get stuck there. It's not okay to not be, you know, if you think about it, when we talked about loneliness two weeks ago, a lot of loneliness comes from sticking in your comfort zone. A lot of loneliness comes from sticking in your comfort zone from doing the same thing over and over and over again and wanting something else. Remember, it was about desire, to desire something else, but being afraid to move out of that comfort zone to get it. And so 
you know, uh, we, we move back and forth in our comfort zone. And, and I'm inviting you today to take a look at your own comfort zone. Take a look at moving in and out of a comfort zone. What are some of the pros and cons of move, staying in a comfort zone? What are some of the pros of staying in a comfort zone? What are some of the cons of staying in a comfort zone? And, and there are both. What are some of the pros? Well, there are a lot of pros to staying in your comfort zone, and we, we shouldn't overlook them. First of all, you're drawing on experience when you stay in your comfort zone. You have experience in it. You know about it. You know the pitfalls of it. When you st choose to stay in your comfort zone, you, you per you're participating in familiar activities. You, you perform tasks that you're com you completed repeatedly and with a real track record of success. And staying in your comfort zone allows you to draw on the experience you've gained from past performances in areas that you undoubtedly know well. And that's good for us. It builds our confidence. Staying in our comfort zone, staying in and doing those familiar activities actually helps us get ready to step out of our comfort zone. It prepares us to do that. It teaches us confidence. It, get, it get, helps gets us over our fears. It shows us that we can be successful, that we are successful, that we have everything we need to be successful. New experiences can cause pause and trepidation. Keeping in one's comfort zone inspires confidence and limits anxiety. When you're succeeded in, in the past, when you've succeeded in the past on a task, it promotes a healthy self-assurance in addressing similar undertakings in the future. So, you know, we don't need to feel pause and trepidation on an ongoing basis. We don't always need to be getting out of that comfort zone. We can relieve that fear and anxiety by staying in our comfort zone. And remember, going back to loneliness from two weeks ago again, what was the major pull that we talked about when we talked about loneliness? We talked about staying in the center, finding the center, using cold loneliness to calm down your hot loneliness, to get back to the center to stay at a comfort point, to stay at our birthright, that center place. And so staying in and out of your comfort zone is requires coming in and out of the center and knowing what your center point is and when you can move out of that comfort zone and when you need to stay in it. Staying in your comfort zone minimizes risk. And we have to look at what risk we're willing to take and what and when we're willing to take them. Staying in your comfort zone can be rejuvenating. You're comfortable there. You've had a, you've been stepping out of your comfort zone. You've had things come at you. I mean, what about those things? Things that come at you that you're not ex expecting that put you out of your comfort zone. Things that the universe brings that we're not, you know, that we're in the midst of that we don't even know that we're in the midst of, and all of a sudden we're out of our comfort zone. After you've pushed yourself outside of your typical boundaries, returning to your comfort zone can help you reinvigorate and psychologically recuperate before returning to more anxiety-inducing and uncertain situations. It fills you back up, your comfort zone. For those of you that eat meat, we all you know there's nothing better than meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy or macaroni and cheese with it too. That's comfort food. It's rejuvenating food. It, it, it puts us in a place of, 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 uh, of rejuvenating ourselves, of, of, of being more willing to step out of that comfort zone. If an activity is in your comfort zone, chances are you can complete it quickly and easily without too much forethought or planning. The ease of routine tasks frees up more time and mental energy for addressing challenging work. So we can be 
in our comfort zone and then move out. We can balance it. We can find that middle point. And what are some of the cons of staying in that comfort zone too much, of not moving out of it? Well, you're holding back. If you stay in your comfort zone too long, it's going to make you complacent. If you don't perform activities that somewhat scare or challenge you, you miss out on growth activities. And again, going back to the age thing, no matter what age we are, growth, act, growth activities, growth opportunities are good for all of us. They keep us healthy. They keep us alive. They keep us moving forward. They keep us thinking new thoughts. In physics, I think Newton's first law of motion dictates a body at rest will remain at rest unless an outside force acts on it. And a body in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Translated to comfort zones, you can't make progress by keeping still. Ah, <laughs> good old Newton. You can't make progress by keeping still. A, a body in motion is, a, we want, it takes something to put a body in motion. If you're still, you're not going to put your life in motion. You're not going to keep it going. If you're not willing to step outside of it occasionally, no risk, no reward. Perhaps it's overused, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you don't try something new, you won't succeed at anything new. Big rewards come to those willing to take risks, even if they aren't large risks. I'm not talking about going out and taking a new large risk every day or every morning and night. I'm talking about taking some small risks. I'm talking about keeping active, keeping stepping out of the comfort zone, experiencing new things, spicing life up a bit, making life sexy. You know, that's the new thing. Everything's got to be sexy today. Whatever you wear, it's got to be sexy. Whatever whatever pot kind of paper you buy, it's got to be sexy paper. The wrapping paper has to be sexy. Keep life sexy. Step out of your comfort zone. And if you're just, Staying in your comfort zone, you're not learning new school skills. If you only work on current strengths, you neglect the chance to develop new ones. And if you don't move outside of your comfort zone, you're missing the opportunity to make your comfort zone bigger. It won't ever get any bigger if you don't step, even take little steps right outside of it. One of the most compelling reasons to push outside of your usual boundaries is to stretch your comfort zone. When you take risks, embrace some discomfort and doubt, and succeed, you not only improve your overall skill set, but you boost your confidence. The more you try challenging activities, the more normal these activities become. They broaden your comfort zone to larger and larger dimensions. So that comfort zone. If you look in the e-news, you'll see I asked Mary to put this little graphic in it, and you'll see it. It's four concentric circles, and in the middle is your comfort zone, and the Stepping right outside that circle is your fear zone. Ah, you, you know it's right outside your comfort zone, don't you? That fear zone. Oh, I'm going to Safeway. Oh, no, take a breath. I'm oh, oh, I won't know where anything is. Even though there are signs right above every owl that tells you what's going down them. But I won't know. And I know where everything is at Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll maybe I'll find some excuses. Oh, I'll go the next time. And, and then right next to that fears, comfort zone, fear zone, we have the learning zone. Where we deal with challenges and problems, where we acquire new skills, where we extend your comfort zone. Well. Since the last time I've been in a Safeway, their produce section has certainly enlarged. And they have why well, they had more things than Whole Foods had, actually, and better selection. 
I might go back there again. I, I, uh, let me, why, to be honest with you, I actually stopped in Safeway again on Saturday and took a look around the produce department so I could get more familiar with it. So I, I moved into that learning zone. And now here I am today in my growth zone. I'm sharing about my moving out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. I, I, I'm moving out of Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. It's a new life. <laughs> it's a new shopping experience. So we go from our comfort zone to our fear zone, to our learning zone, and to our growth zone. And I, I wanted to use my shopping example to show you that it doesn't matter. It, it's, I'm talking about small things, medium-sized things, big things. It doesn't matter. It, give yourself credit when you move out of your comfort zone. I, 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 it's good for me to give myself credit for moving out of my comfort zone and to tell you about it. Do the same thing. Move out of your comfort zone and celebrate it. In the warmth of our, and uh, Maggie Wool wrote in our, W-O-O-L-L, -O -L, Maggie Wool, I guess, that's hard to say, wrote an article, how to get out of your comfort zone in six simple steps. And, and we're gonna talk about those six simple steps quickly, but she says, in the warmth of our comfort zone, life feels safe and familiar. More often than we care to admit, finding the motivation to leave is hard. That's the truth. Finding the motivation to leave. We, we get stuck there. We, we, we don't have the zeal, the power of zeal. We need to pray for the power of zeal. We need to get the zeal to get up and get moving, to find the motivation to leave. But the more we're stuck in our comfort zone, the more opportunities we miss to fully immerse ourselves in the human experience. Let's find out what a comfort zone is why it's hard to leave it, and the steps needed to break through that bubble and find out what we're capable of. So what is a comfort zone? The comfort zone is a psychological state in which a person feels at ease because they're not being tested. Let me say it one more time. The comfort zone is a psychological state in which a person feels at ease because they're not being tested. Inside the comfort zone, people don't typically engage in new experiences or take any challenges. They only participate in activities that are familiar, making them feel in control of their environment. People stay in their comfort zone to avoid feelings of anxiety or, st anxiety or stress and pain. Anything outside the comfort zone creates uncertainty. Uncertainty makes us feel anxious. Naturally, human beings are wired to avoid these feelings. This makes them reluctant to leave their comfort zone. So we're wired. We're wired to avoid those feelings. We don't want to feel discomfort. We don't want to feel anxious. We don't want, when we go to change, you know, Reverend Larry Schneider talked about it when he talked, uh, when he, in, um, in uh, Metanoia, and, and when he preached, he talked about those neural networks that get formed, and about the chemicals that are released, and how we get comfortable in that chemical that, that we're, that's in our body, and when we move out of it, it releases new comfortables, and we feel that, and it's not as comfortable as it was. It's painful, and we try to avoid that pain, so we get stuck in our comfort zone, and, 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 well, why should we move out of our comfort zone? As comfortable as it seems, this safe bubble keeps us from personal growth and doing things that we want, but we don't have the courage to do. We've all done it. How many of us have stayed in an unfulfilling job for years because we were in our comfort zone? We knew we were capable of doing more, but we just... One day we were willing to challenge our boundaries and the next day we weren't. And we didn't really get the zeal underneath of us to really do it. In order for us to be open to co-creating with God, with the universe, with spirit, 
It will take the willingness to move out of our comfort zone. The author Neil Donald Walsh says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. A comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. Let's consider moving out of your comfort zone. What does that look like? What does that look like for you? I invite you today to, to stop and think what that would look like. What, what, and what could you do? What, what's, pick one thing that you could do to move out of your comfort zone. Let's look at some ways that you can use to begin to get out of your comfort zone. First of all, you could do one thing you've always wanted to. One thing that you've always wanted to. We all have one thing that we've always wanted to do. If you have a list of all the things you've always wanted to do, but just haven't gotten around to yet, you're not alone. Most people have so-called bucket list filled with meaningful experiences and goals they want to accomplish. Challenge yourself by picking one thing you've always wanted to do and doing it. One thing. It, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be a big thing. Just pick one thing out of that bucket list and do it. You could take on a fitness challenge. According to YouGov America data, getting healthier was the main goal of U.S. adults in 2021. Take a 30-day fitness challenge on of running or cycling or lifting or swimming or something. And studies show that regular exercise decreases the effects of stress on the body. So you're killing two birds with one stone. And it will certainly move you out of your comfort zone. In my new gym routine, I told you I was coming out of the gym, going to Safeway. I'm out of my comfort zone. Let me, I'll tell you about that next week. Uh, but he's got me out of my comfort zone. Let me tell you. Change up your routine. Change up your routine. A routine built on good habits gives people stability and helps them get things done. But when someone becomes too cemented into their daily routine, they begin, <clears throat> excuse me, they begin to feel like they're running on autopilot. Shake up your routine with some spontaneity. Do it different. Shave in the evening instead of in the morning. Have breakfast at 10 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. Have two eggs instead of one. Shake up your routine. Do it differently. Have tea instead of coffee. I don't know, whatever you choose. It, it, it'll get you going. It'll, it'll feel good. It'll get some different chemicals moving around. You could look at expanding your professional skill set or your skill set in general. Maybe you, you, you know, you're done expanding your professional skill set, but what about that hobby? Or what about that uh, new interest that you have? Expand it. Look into it. Delve into it. Take a class in it. Go out and find some like-minded people that are interested in it and hang around with them. Oh, here's one you're going to love. Here's the fifth one. We've only got one more after that. You ready? Choose a fear and face it. Choose a fear and face it. Doesn't have to be a big fear. We've all got little fears. Pick one and face it. Move out of your comfort zone on it. I think you'll like it. It will give you a new perspective on your comfort zone and, and moving in and out of it. It will actually, facing a fear, will give you a new perspective on you. Now, after that one that you might not like, here's one you're going to like, and it's in honor of Patricia Wright. Travel somewhere new. <laughs> there you go. Just travel somewhere new. She's traveling everywhere new. <laughs> but travel somewhere new. But, you know, we all get in the habit of going where we've gone before. I, I, I do it. I, uh, oh, take me to Koalina on Hawaii. I'm comfortable there. I like the view from the from the resort there. Let me go someplace new. Let's pick someplace new. Get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. When leaving your comfort zone will feel, whoa, let me say that again. Leaving your comfort zone will feel uncomfortable and in intimidating at first. Have fun with it. Leave your ego at the door and don't aim for perfection. 
Instead, have fun and rediscover the joy of experiencing new things. Excuse me. Reframe your outlook. Instead of imagining the worst possible outcome, how about start imagining the best? Well, now that sounds like a unity principle, doesn't it? Practice visualization techniques and feel the joy of achieving your goal. Celebrate each win. Acknowledge your progress and celebrate your successes, big and small. And here's the big one, reduce overthinking. Reduce overthinking. Overthinking stops you from taking action and turns everything into a worst case scenario. Practice like mindful breathing can help reduce negative thinking and anxiety. Here's just a few quotes to remember as you're moving through getting out of your comfort zone. Albert Einstein says, a ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what it is built for. Annette White said, don't let fear make your decisions for you. An anonymous writer said, when was the last time you did something for the first time? When was the last time you did something for the first time? And do one thing that scares you every day. Thank you, Eleanor Roosevelt. Get out of your comfort zone if you'd like to. Do one thing that scares you every day. Have a great week. Thanks for being here. Thank you.